Hello everyone, so I am not quite back to making videos yet, um, as you might be able to guess by the mess of wires that you've got here and the fact there's a point motor and a signal. Yes, I'm still in the middle of adding point motors and signals to my railway. Uh, I know I mentioned in the Christmas stream that was something I was doing, I was going to add lit signals and point motors to change the points. I don't know if I made it apparent though that I was going to be doing it immediately after Christmas, so... Now I can tell you how I am and was doing it immediately after Christmas. I've got 19 of the Gage Master Seep PM1 point motors in. They look like this, just two simple solenoids or coils of wire. Little metal bar that, of course, pulls the pin across. That sticks through a hole cut in the bottom of the baseboard. That pin sticks through, you can probably see over here, the hole. And then, of course, when the point motor moves underneath... That switches that over and then you can get a pair of snips or probably a cut off wheel from a dremel and cut that flush because otherwise your trains aren't going to be going anywhere so what i've done is i've soldered to the pads on here and i've made a little harness that allows me to screw wires into this six terminal block um rather than soldering underneath the baseboard because that's dangerous it's difficult to get access to there's wires everywhere and i don't want 400 degree solder dropping on my face so i've made these little harnesses i can just screw these into the baseboard underneath screw these in and then screw my wires into the terminal blocks and that makes it a lot easier so i've got 19 points to put on my layout of which i have done 15 so i've got four left to go and there's going to be 13 of these signals as well so uh in another video in a later video once it's all done i'll explain how this all works a lot better but these are the switches i've bought i think i bought them from I think it was Amazon and they are single pole double throw momentary or sprung center switches so if I pull that one there it springs immediately back to the middle if I push it it goes to the edge and springs back as well and that's good because if you have a constant on both way single pole double throw switch then your point motor will burn out because you only want to brief pulse of power to flick it over then you de-energize the coil so it doesn't not only waste power but uh, burn itself out so i've got these little mini switches that i'll mount into a panel and i'll probably borrow my granddad's label printer or make some of my own so i know which switch is which so they are my switches you've already seen the gauge master pm ones uh, with they have the inbuilt accessory switch and these are my red green signals i'm not bothering with double yellow single yellow flashing yellow you know feathers to tell you which side and you're off into i'm keeping it simple and i'm keeping it cheap because i'm not a person who can spend two grand on the best systems nor would i want to spend the time wiring it as much as i like wiring it so these are some simple signals off ebay i will link the link to well i will link to where i got the gauge master pm ones from where i got these little momentary single pole double throw switches from and i will link where i got these red green signals from in the description they are quite nice things you can get them off amazon but i think they're about three four pounds more and because i was buying three sets of five cost one pack gives you five of these it made sense to do it off ebay so these are quite nice they've got a brass according to the listing center pole a plastic ladder a relatively nice base that's six nights and flash and the signal head doesn't actually look too bad either i don't think the wires yeah they are perfectly hidden on the back but a bit of paint or a bit of permanent marker even might fix that so overall i'm quite happy with them there are three wires and these signals are common positives which means it's the negatives being switched rather than on the gauge master pm ones it's a common negative so the positive to each coil is switched so you've got the lead with the resistor i'm not sure what this resistor is i could work it out but take too long so you connect your positive to here and then these two go through a switch green for the green on top red for the red light on the bottom connect these through a switch and then if you, depending on which one you connect the negative to, to complete the circuit depends on which green or red light will light up there and i do quite like these signals to be honest so i've got a little bit of a test set up here to sort of show you how it will work when it's all wired in of course underneath the boards and a lot like that so we're using a battery as a power supply i will be running it off 12 volts um and i probably will end up adding another resistor in because i've got some 512 ohm resistors and these are a thousand ohm resistors so to bring it up to 1500 ohms just to reduce the brightness of these leds but also to run them at less current which means they last longer um, and it's just beneficial for the led because although if i show you now they are you know a relatively decent brightness 
Um, they don't need to be super bright, do they? So I could probably stick another 500 ohm resistor I've got left over um, in series with that other resistor there on the common positive. And then that just runs them cooler, makes them last longer and makes them less bright. But as you can see there, they're not too bad. So the basic way I'm going to wire this up is we're just talking in relation to signal and point motor. The power supply for the point motor is a completely different story. Um, the switches, I should say, are going to be changing the point motor uh, from left or right, not the signals. So I've got a battery as the power supply. The positive of the battery goes to the uh, common positive, the one with the resistor on. And then from the point motor, what we have is a little bit of a switch inbuilt. So this purple wire here is where I feed the negative in. And then depending on whether the point motor is set left or set right, depends on which two of these contacts here. So if I'm here set to red, then this is the negative feed in. And this is the negative feed out to the light, which of course puts the red on. Now, if I switch the switch, then this is the negative feed in, and that's shorter to this one, which goes through the switch, out, through this wire, to the green, and the green signal lights up. A better way I might be able to demonstrate this to you is if I use a multimeter. So, if I probe across these two, these should be shorted. Yep, so they're shorted. This is the negative feed in, goes out to the green LED. If I change the point, then these two should be shorted, which brings the negative in through the switch, through this wire only, not this one, to the red connection, and then powers the red LED. So that is basically how I intend to wire my signals to my point motors. It means I don't need to use relay logic, you know, latching, you know, passing contact home believers to on-on switches. It's just a lot easier to buy these with a the switch built in and these were only £5.50 each from Hattons which is brilliant signals cost me £42.01 pence something like that uh, low 40s anyway for 15 of these and they come in packs of five so I've got three packs so that is how I intend to wire my signals to my point motors and that's a little bit of an update as to where I am on the progress um, tomorrow which will be, what is it, the 13th today. So on the 14th, I am going out, hopefully, fingers crossed, um, to see the Class 56 farewell tour. So that video will be out, but until all the point motors are done, I'm not going to be able to film that tug of war video that is going to be the first video of 2023. So until then, I'll just keep giving you short updates like this. And uh, either tomorrow or Sunday, I'll put the video out with the farewell Class 56 tour. So that's how we intend to do it. I suppose you're now wondering how I'm wiring the point motors. Well, it's fairly simple. Using the switches here, it's what you do is you connect. Now I have to remember how you do this. You put the positive feed into... Uh, you, sorry, you put the negative feed, which is the black wire, into the point motor. Then you pass the positives to this switch. And then obviously if you... So let's say you had it this way. So if you pull it this way, that connects the feed from your controller through the switch and it energizes that coil. So it pulls the motor that way. If you push the switch the other way, that connects the positive feed to this coil and then that will pull the point that way. So although this has been a bit of a ramble, I hope this has been useful for you. Um, it did take me quite a while to figure out how to, do, how to uh, set up all this. That flickered then just because it's not it's not screwed in, it's not sturdy. But that is how I'm going to connect my point motors to my signals. And hopefully if you're thinking of doing something like this, then maybe the product's linked down in the description. The signals, the switches, and the point motors may be a bit of use to you. So that is a short update on what I'm doing. I'm now going to go fit the last four of these gauge master seep pm ones and then i'll probably start connecting up all the negative connections i've got a cdu on the way as well which i will link in the description and probably also make a separate update about cost me 17 quid i think it's 20,000 microfarad um i think it's like 9 to 24 volt ac or dc input and i'm using a 16 volt ac from a h&m safety minor controller so should be interesting i will keep you updated and that is how I'm going to switch my signals with my points on Hybrid Camel Railway. Till next time, folks, goodbye.